Hello, everyone. Welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, we are going to discuss the recent elections in Turkey. This was an important election because the present president, Erdogan, I think we have to note the pronunciation, even though it is written as Erdogan, it is pronounced in Turkish as Erdogan, it seems. I don't know if I'm correct, but uh, the Turkish pronunciation one has to, one has to learn. So he is uh, in Turkish, he is Rajid Tayyip Erdogan, that is the name. But in English, of course, everybody writes it as Erdogan. So this is his third term. And uh, unexpectedly, he ran into difficulties in the early voting. It was believed that he would win the election. And he has been in power for the last 20 years. A uh, long time as prime minister, and this is the third time as president. So he's an important international figure. And his election was considered important, particularly because he was in some difficulties on account of various things. First of all, his own economic policies were not very much acceptable to the people. Then there was an earthquake where about 50,000 people died, and the way he handled it was not fully appreciated by the people. And probably this is for, the, for these reasons that he did not win the election in the first round. So he had to then go to a, what is called a runoff election. But in the runoff voting, he, he won with a big majority. In fact, he got 52% 50, 50, of, the, of the votes. So this was being watched by the entire international community because Turkey is an important country. Uh, but his own ways is increasingly, um, you know, uh, non-democratic in certain ways. And uh, his policies were not widely appreciated. And also he, even though it is a member of, he is a member of NATO, Turkey is a member of NATO, but he has had his special positions on various issues. So what happened was, in fact, uh, today, uh, the President of the United States congratulated Edwan, and uh, immediately he raised an issue. Both of them had two issues to talk about. Edwan said, what happened to my F-16 aircraft? He has been trying to buy F-16 aircraft under the NATO arrangements from Turkey, and that is being delayed. He is very much uh, irritated by that. So the first thing he asked the President of the United States was that, how about my F-16 aircraft? But in reply, the president, though he was not negative about it, uh, but he said, how about the membership of Sweden in NATO? So this is, this is an issue. And immediately, as soon as he was elected, both these were projected. And the briefing from the White House indicated that there were these two interlinked issues. So unless Turkey agrees to the membership of Sweden, uh, it looks as though the United States will not be willing to provide F-16 to Turkey. So it's a live, uh, live kind of debate. And both of them agreed to discuss this further. So obviously you can see some kind of tension there. But the fact that he has been elected now is a reality. And now he will be president for five years, that is 2028. And that will make about 30 years as a uh, you know, top authority in Turkey. And so his influence is very great. And uh, Turkish location between Asia and Europe, it's a religious uh, situation. It was a secular state, but Erdogan has increasingly made it uh, an Islamic state. He has developed links with some Islamic countries. So all these have made Erdogan a kind of valuable partner of NATO. At the same time, a bit of a problem because he has a view which is slightly different from other NATO countries. And um, in, the, in the war also, the Russia-Ukraine war, he has been taking some kind of a neutral position rather than supporting Ukraine entirely. So he has had uh, exchanges with uh, President Putin and he has been in consultation with him. So in other words, his victory is of course was, was inevitable in spite of the problems that he had. He got a good majority, 
and uh, despite the ongoing economic crisis and the criticism about its response to the earthquake, he has won a successful, uh, won a, uh, a uh, acceptable majority. So he has already become the longest serving leader in the Turkish Republic because he will be president till 2028. Uh, one thing that has caused problems for him is, is unorth unorthodox fiscal policies, uh, depressing interest and rampant inflation, and that has affected the people. But still, he got a 50% of the runoff elections. And uh, it obviously, it looks that the people are looking uh, for stability over change, because some and some they may not have, they may have wanted to have some change in policies, etc., but nobody else could have provided the kind of uh, 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 kind of stability that the country needs at this time. So the people seem to have preferred stability to a uh, change, and uh, therefore, in spite of the problems, uh, he has been able to come back to power with a comfortable majority. So he never shied away from using government funds for his personal advancement. And uh, he was quite unorthodox in his approach to uh, the financial situation of the country. Uh, and uh, very in many cases, his government spent uh, on, uh, on various uh, infrastructure development, etc., which the people did not appreciate. They thought it was he was trying to be too lavish with uh, infrastructure development. Um, but he also increased wages of the people and pensions too also were increased. So on the whole, he has been balancing it well. On the one hand, he has these problems with some people, but at the same time, he mixes up, uh, you know, some kind of uh, dictatorship with welfare. So that was the combination that he has been following. And that is why he has been able to stay in power in spite of his difference of opinion with, with NATO. But his position in the NATO is important. And that is why Sweden has not been able to become a member of uh, NATO so far. Uh, Finland has already been admitted. And it is uh, only Turkey and uh, Hungary who seem to be opposing this. So that's an important aspect at this time because how many NATO countries are created as against the original commitment given not to bring in many of these countries into NATO. But the present situation now, the United States is openly supporting expansion of the NATO. And that is causing greater confusion in the Ukraine, uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict. So, uh, the industrial sector, the military industrial sector in the econ has been developing in Turkey at a very impressive pace. And uh, this development has been a point of pride for Turkey. And uh, this is considered as part of the strength of the, of the country. But they have developed a very impressive military industrial complex. And uh, that is why they want to strengthen it more, acquire more planes and more uh, lethal weapons, etc. Uh, because Turkey is following a rather independent policy and it would like to project a kind of power in uh, Europe itself. Of course, in Europe itself, Turkey is not a major country. Uh, but since it's a member of NATO, basically an Islamic country, all this add some flavor to the... Um, to the Erdogan's uh, uh, presidency. And uh, he is also very proud of frequently used and domestically produced drones, which has been added to uh, the fleet, military fleet of um, Turkey. And that is a matter of pride uh, for him. And he's also been a significant player on the world stage. He's always in the news. There was a coup attempt against him. And it was felt that, uh, you know, he would fall. But he was able to manage it very effectively. And in spite of the, uh, the seriousness of the crisis, 
he was able to you know, overcome it and continue as president. And that also has added a certain amount of pride and uh, strength to him. So in, on the world stage, he has been very active in dealing with the international issues. He has tried to develop his own Islamic group, which was not very successful. In NATO, it, cont it controls the second largest army. So it's not a small, small power inside NATO. And uh, so he's considered as an in indispensable, but at the same time, problem, troublesome NATO ally. That is his stature. So NATO deals with him carefully, cautiously, and uh, his election is impressive win, even on a, a run-up election, uh, has impressed everyone, and people will be keen to watch his movements in the future. Um, in, um, so he has held up Sweden's, as I mentioned, entry into NATO and uh, purchased a Russian missile system. I think it is like the ones that we have purchased as the S-400 missiles. And uh, United States does not like people to buy the missile system from Russia. And the United States was at one time threatening to veto it in some form. But, uh, but in the case of uh, Turkey, it was even more difficult because uh, Turkey is part of NATO. So the United States would not like the Russian missile to be in, in, inducted into the uh, NATO system in uh, Turkey. So in fact, in the case of India, it is not there is an independent purchase that we have made. And therefore, they seem to have accepted it, even though there are some difficulties because of the current war. Um, but in the case of uh, uh, Turkey, the uh, United States was even more difficult about the, about the missiles. So you know, on top of it, Turkey is now out to get a US-led led fighter project. And that, so they have been excluded from that fighter project because he has bought a Russian uh, missile system. So one of the things that he did during the Russia-Ukraine war uh, was to negotiate a deal with the support of the United Nations to resume shipping grain through the Baltic sea ports in uh, Ukraine, because Ukraine has been supplying grain to much of the world, and it was held up and it was creating confusion, not only in the markets abroad, but also within Ukraine itself. So it was a necessity to get these grains out, and he managed to do that. So, uh, and also involved with the United Nations. And that has been a success story, and there was basically a good contribution that he made uh, to the crisis in, uh, in, in Ukraine on account of the lack of uh, ability to export, export grains. So he has been playing a role, very effective role in some issues relating to the war. And also he is now acceptable as a kind of mediator because he's uh, not on one side very strongly, even though he's a NATO member. And therefore, he has some flexibility in acting. But he has deep loyalty from conservative and religious supporters. And that is his strength. First is military strength, which is impressive. And at the same time, conservative and religious supporters. And um, uh, he has been following a very conservative policy with regard to the social norms in that country. So, though on the one hand, he's been, you know, helping himself uh, with power and also enjoying the facilities that is available to the head of state, uh, he has very strongly supported religious sentiments. And also he has tried to build religious and Islamic linkages with like Turkey and Iran and Pakistan and so on. So this is the kind of role that he plays. On, um, on women and uh, the issue of uh, wearing of headscarves in schools and offices, etc., he has changed the rules in the sense that uh, they are not compulsory and it has been left to the people concerned. 
And same is the case with uh, transgender uh, rules and regulations. He has been very strict about it, unlike in other parts of Europe, where people are liberal about uh, lesbians and gays, etc., their behavior in the society. So here he is very uh, conservative about it, and that has pleased a large number of people in his own, his own country. Um, one other thing he did, was, which created uh, waves around the world, uh, was the conversion of the famous Istanbul's uh, cathedral, Hagia Sophia, into a mosque after many years. So it was a museum for decades. And uh, he uh, very strongly intervened and turned it into a mosque. And this was just created a lot of reactions around the world. Uh, but he has not uh, conceded that. And so it is not a museum anymore. It is a, a serving mosque. And as I mentioned also this question of, uh, of the LG, the, the lesbian and gay movement. And um, because he considers that a threat to the traditional family loyalties, etc. So there again, he has a position slightly different from other countries in Europe. And he's taken total control of the media. And uh, there is not even a pretense of uh, uh, free speech. And um, generally, it's also believed that even though the elections went through the normal uh, procedures, the normally certification is uh, uh, that, um, uh, you know, some, some, this determination is made normally whether an election is free and fair. So, but the assessment made by the observers is that elections were free, but not fair, in the sense that he seems to have manipulated voting situation or counting various things. So it is not a clean chip that he has been given, says that it is a free election, but not fair election. Uh, of course, the opposition leader was quite uh, strong, and uh, he had opposed the president's uh, uh, economic policies. And uh, he stressed the importance of democracy in Turkey. Uh, but that is, uh, it, uh, it had its supporters. And, uh, uh, but at the same time, he was able to uh, win the elections. And uh, on human rights, his record is not particularly good because he has been uh, oppressing and suppressing any kind of uh, difference of opinion. And, um, and uh, also in fighting terrorism, he has been very active and uh, he has been dealing with uh, what he considers terrorists or enemies of the people or the, his government. He has been very tough. So on the trappings of democracy, he is not doing very well, but he is able to sustain a different policy all through because of one hand his firmness in dealing with the issues, on the other hand the kind of popularity that he has been able to you know, win as a result of his support to the conservatives uh, in the country. So these are the significant developments and on his um, uh, foreign policy he has declared that the foreign policy of Turkey is to make friends, not enemies. So in the sense that he is willing to adjust and accept diversity in the NATO or in other bodies. And uh, he still continues to have good relations with uh, its neighbors and other countries. Um, the traditional uh, difference and problems between Turkey and Greece, Erdogan has been able to make a contribution. He visited uh, uh, Greece and the uh, Cyprus issue still remains and Turkey is not in charge of Cyprus as yet and uh, there's a proposal for division of Cyprus etc. This, uh, this issue is as old as the United Nations itself and uh, still there are uh, difficulties in that but still we visited Greece and tried to uh, bring about some understanding. Because the coup attempt I mentioned in 2016 and uh, he declared a state of emergency, which still seems to be in existence. And um, he has 
um, tried to bring about uh, further uh, agreements among the people. And the very fact that he survived the coup attempt was a contribute, was a tribute uh, to his leadership. So, and he has fought against, uh, you know, the dissidents. And um, on the whole, he has been a successful president. There's no question about it. He may not fit into the, the norms that are generally acceptable in a democracy and a secular state, which it was. Uh, but he has been able to hold his position with this diversity. And that has been his uh, success. In the Ukraine-Russia conflict, he has always acted as a kind of peacemaker. And he has that strength because he is in NATO and at the same time, he is not completely critical or condemnatory about uh, Mr. Putin. So this is the background of the, of the elections. And once he takes over, we will see more uh, developments in this area. Uh, but generally, uh, it is believed that his presidency will provide some stability to the country. He may be able to resolve the economic problems and also resolve the issue of uh, Sweden's membership of NATO. And all these will be once he has settled down as president for the third term. It is expected that he will do business with uh, the United States and others. And that is what we saw in this telephone call yesterday, uh, when both of them raised the basic issues in the first congratulatory conversation itself. And uh, so they are very keen to get each other, understand each other's point of view. So on the whole, uh, this is a better result than a new person coming into power. And that would have created very many difficulties, not only for Turkey, but also NATO. So, uh, they say, you know, uh, a kind of a non non devil is better than an unknown angel. They say, so it is that kind of way that uh, the people have accepted him and voted for him. And so, on the whole, I think it is a good development from the perspective of uh, Europe and the present conflict situation. Of course, as far as the Ukraine war is concerned, there is no Indian sight. There's not even a uh, in a ceasefire. And uh, NATO is not interested in a ceasefire because they feel that if there is a ceasefire, that will enable Putin's forces to regroup themselves and maybe fight a more uh, harsh war. So there, there is no, no hope as of now. Uh, but the expectation still holds that uh, the G20 meeting in, in September, the summit, might throw some new light on this issue. But as of now, the matter is uh, completely out of control and uh, there are accusations that uh, Ukraine has been using drones against uh, Russia. That's been considered a very serious matter, although it is not established that they were the ones who launched those drones. So a slight improvement, a slight ray of hope in the situation in Turkey is what I would call Mr. Duan's election. Thank you very much.